Well, hello and a very warm welcome back to another week on my allotment. Before I go any further, can I start by asking you, before we go any further, just to hit the thumbs up button. I spoke to somebody this week who said the reason your channel doesn't have more subscribers is because you don't push it hard enough. And I, you know, I never mention it really. So he said that the more thumbs up and thumbs down you get, the wider your your videos will spread. You know, I have watched a couple of chaps who've got one or two hundred subscribers, so under half of what I've got, but they get over one or two thousand views. And he says that's why, because they get more thumbs up and down. I don't know. But while you're sat there, it's free, it doesn't take any effort, please just hit the thumbs up. Right, that's that done. Um, so yeah, on the plot, uh, the weather continues to be dry. I'm driving my van round the back now regularly which is unheard of in February. Um, yeah, the plot's immaculate. I've had quite a bit of time up here recently because um, I've rung around quite a few customers, but you know they, they just don't want me yet. So um, it's going to be another week before I really kick off with work. Um, so I've had a lot of time up here, which I love. Um, and it really is, I'm going to use the word immaculate. Everything is sorted. Uh, I got a few more snowdrops from the estate work I do um, recently um, and that's nice so they're in those little pots they just had a little splash of colour um, in an otherwise very bland landscape um, so yeah I've, I'm wandering around looking for things to do uh, the real effort at the moment is at home with the seedlings and the spare bedroom south facing windowsill just isn't big enough I've had to move some stuff into the conservatory, things like leeks and onions that are up now and that the conservatory gets a bit chillier at night and they don't mind that. So yeah, the real work is going on at home. But I think we'll start with doing a, a wander around the tour, around the plot. Right, let's start at the back of the plot. My favorite seat in the summer. And it's too hot around the other side, and that seat's in the shade. It's lovely to have my first dafts out. Oddly, they're the ones in the shade. <laughs> and this is the only raspberry I can successfully grow on the plot. Um, I did dig up some of the uh, runners that were growing around here last summer and put them down the other end, we shall see. But I've tried and tried, but this is the only plant that succeeds and it gives me some lovely raspberries. Talking about finding things to do, I've given a good mulch of well-rotted um, cow muck to those blackberries. And this one here is a tay berry that I bought last year. Never had tay berries, we'll give that a go. Um, in fact, now I think about it, these are some of the suckers off the raspberry plant as well. Um, so to the to the plot main. Well Les is out early picking up balls. He must have had a good day yesterday. So this is the rest area <laughs> where I spend a lot of time. Another wonderful thing that's happened this week is finally I've got a pond full of frog spawn. Every time I go past this pond there's a flurry of activity and I think at one point I did interrupt a frog orgy but it's lovely to see the frog spawn um, in the in the pond 
good to see that nature is never ending and continues it's wonderful so yeah on the plot you'll see the the two enviromesh beds um, spent a lot of time putting those sticks up and putting the little guards on the top and and spacing out the netting um, and that's only there's nothing in them it's just to make sure that the netting is intact because I've had some mouse damage in previous years which I had to sew up tediously so yeah they're now up ready for the brassicas <coughs> excuse me um, yeah that was one job I did this week I've got tulips coming up here ready to go by the bench and then here a little bit misted up at the moment but are some very well developed sweet peas that I started off in October November in fact really they're developing too well because you know, it's just too early to put them out um, this bed here is my cut flower bed this year there's the little deer that I've got to develop with my granddaughter um, as the snowdrops that I got this week they look lovely in those tubs by the um, gate the garlic is doing very well, as garlic always does. So garlic, asparagus bed, garlic, and that last little thin bed is going to be onions that I've grown from seed. Each of these long brown plastic tubs has got daffodils in and they're all developing well. And if, you may remember if you've been around a while that I had rogue daffodils growing in some of the beds. They must have come out of my compost heap. And I filled the, when they'd gone over, I put them in these tubs just to make sure that I, they were all in the tubs and not the beds. Um, these box balls look good. I got those from a customer and I've put some new fresh compost in the bottom. Maybe the strawberries will need some attention at some point just to cut all these dead leaves off as they start to regrow. Um, what else? I've put the Sutton uh, broad beans in next to the Aquadolce and I've sown some more Sutton and Aquadolce to fill the gaps that will inevitably occur. I said about all these um, onion sets that went soggy caused by the freezing temperatures before Christmas and I've left them and they seem okay I mean I don't know what the long-term prospects for them are because they suffered from the cold but we shall see um, yeah more tulips in these pots here the roses have got uh, their new spring growth developing which is always nice to see and I'm really hoping to develop this into a complete rose arch that would be lovely to walk through here and see see it full of roses in the summer we shall see um, I'm gonna that's uh, just a bed of um, wigwams that I'm gonna grow my French and runner beans on this year and now to the last part of the plot I really should come up with a name for it shouldn't I I've called it the end of the plot the extra bit I don't know. Um, I've covered these two. Um, one to keep the weeds down. Um, and I find that with pumpkins there and butternut squash here, um, they'll grow across that. I shall plant them down the edges. The edge there and the edge there. Um, I'll plant them in there and then they can spread across the membrane and it just keeps the weeds down, it makes it all neater and tidier. Um, and then over there I've put a cloche over some extra strawberries I had last year. They cropped very well last year and a little bit earlier than the main ones. So I'm doing it again this year. I've just noticed a tiny little daffodil. And then all the tubs ready for the carrots and the parsnips in spring. So, here we are, what is it, I don't know, 18th, 19th of February, I don't really know. Um, it's all, yeah, like I say, it is all immaculate. Um, there's, you know, I don't know, I'm up here all day, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Because um, it's all 
tickety-boo. Right. Supports for runner beans. This is what I'm doing. They're just very stout wigwams made from bamboo this year. I've given all my normal sticks to John. But other people do different things. Let's have a look. Well, I've said before, my neighbour doesn't really apply himself to his allotment, and that's his prerogative. Um, I'm not trying to be judgmental, <laughs> honest. But this is his runner bean frame that he put up this time last year, and then never grew any runner beans on. Never did anything with it, and it's still there. So that's another level of application. And then we come to John's plot. It's a, it's a work of art. He grows runner beans with one purpose in mind, and that is to take them to the farm shop and to earn money from them, because we get 50% of the profit of everything we take there, and that pays for his plot. He pays for his plot, which is £60 a year, on the money he gets back on the runner beans he takes. And so he, quite rightly, puts a lot of time and effort into it, and it's a thing of beauty. Three tiers. <laughs> Hard to believe that in the summer he can barely move between the rows, but it's quite something. Yes, yeah, so we all do it differently. <laughs> Lovely to hear the bird song. Oh, along that hedgerow behind me. So a lot of people not bothering. Just haven't come back after Christmas. But I guarantee they'll all pay their money and keep their plots. Well, I'm sat in the shed having a brew. Just loving the warmth from the fire. Kettle's on a rolling boil. But I thought I'd show you this. When I uh, drilled a hole in one of the in this um, gourd last weekend, it's a quite it's quite thin and and it gave way. The hole didn't stay true, and so what I did is I cut out a larger hole, and I've just stuck a tea light in it. And when it was dark in here earlier, that was quite an effect. I've drilled some holes around the top to let some of the heat out from the candle, although there's not a lot. And they, they let light through. It's quite, it's almost artistic for me. I'm very pleased with that. That's one staying in here. Well, I'm so desperate looking for things to do up here that I even dusted out, cleaned all the inside of the shed, took all the books off the shelf because they get covered in a fine dust from the stove dusted all those. I even went to the effort of dusting each individual piece of the um, blinds. <laughs> yeah, the shed's immaculate. And I had a tidy up in the tool shed. I haven't cleaned the tools mine. There's a job I can do. Clean and oil the tools. And then Bridget gave me, well a year or two ago, gave me a hundreds of old kitchen garden magazines which I've had stuffed under the bench in the other shed. So this week I took them all out, I put them all out on the floor and on the bench from January to December and I've used old tiles to split up the month so it goes from January, February through till December and I thought that's perfect, they all fit on that one shelf system. How perfect! And then John came over to the picnic bench this week while I was having a coffee and said, Martin, I've got these magazines that Bridget gave me. <laughs> Do you want them? Oh, bloody hell. So, I'm not throwing, you know, these things, I think they're about, to buy the new ones, they're about six or seven quid each. Well, gardening doesn't change that much. So these magazines are as relevant this month as they were five, six years ago. And the ones that Bridget's given me, Go back to 2008, I think. No, 
they go back to the year 2000. I've seen one celebrating the turn of the millennial, millennium. So yeah, I've got to find space for these now. Uh, I saw a clip of uh, Ricky Gervais recently. I do enjoy watching his humour. It's so irreverent and politically incorrect. He doesn't care what he says. I love it. That's how humour should be. It shouldn't be respectful. Anyway, he told a true story about one of his friends. And his friend was going for a job interview somewhere in London. And he was on the railway station. He had a bit of, um, sort of diarrhoea uh, the day before. And as he was stood on the railway platform waiting for the train to arrive, um, he shit himself, <laughs> as you do. Um, yeah, he was a right mess. So um, he walked quietly out of the railway station and across the road was a millet's a clothes shop. So he rushed in this, he squelched across the road and walked in this uh, millet's and said, Levi's, 36 inch, quick. And he paid his money and the bloke, uh, put it in a bag and he walked back across and he got on the train and he went straight in the toilet compartment and he very gingerly took off his trousers and he opened the window <laughs> and threw them out the window of the train then he took off his pants and again he wrapped them up gingerly and he threw them out the window <laughs> and then he did his best he cleaned himself up and he went in this bag to get out his Levi's and they'd given him a jacket Oh, unfortunately, although that is hilarious, he never completed the story. How does this man who has now cleaned himself up as best he can and has nothing to wear from the waist down? <laughs> I'm assuming he never made the job interview. <laughs> oh, you do feel for the fella, don't you? Levi's 36 inch. Oh, wonderful. can't find it again but I was looking through this book earlier a quite interesting fact book um, and I came across a fact that said when Winston Churchill um, visited the US during prohibition he got a prescription from his doctor before he went to allow him to drink unlimited amounts of alcohol <laughs> he was such a clever forward-thinking man <laughs> men are half as likely as women to be naturally blonde. That is really interesting, isn't it? The entire British supply of yak hair was used up making false, false beards for the Hobbit. What are we doing with yak hair anyway? In 1943, the US banned sliced bread. 20% of sandwich varieties account for 80% of the sales. Prawn mayonnaise has been Marks and Spencer's best-selling sandwich since 1981. Beetles have become 20% smaller over the last 100 years. The police in Rome have an under, undercover squad that stops people jumping in fountains. Wow. A waterside restaurant in Perth, Australia hands out water pistols so that diners can repel the seagulls. That's fantastic. And I'll end on this. The average heart rate in San Francisco rose by four beats per minute 
the day Donald Trump was elected. <laughs> Well, it's the end of my day, and what a glorious one. Absolutely superb weather. We really are being lucky this winter. Um, and, you know, I came up here and I thought, there's nothing to do. Um, and there isn't really a great deal with regard to plants, fruits and vegetables. But, you know, I've potted along and I've moved past things and thought, oh, I can sort that out. And, um, painted the flagpole <laughs> um, yeah I, I mean and I've painted the um, cold frame window frames I do that once a year and they seem to last so I, I really am you know getting down into the weeds now metaphorically because um, there are no weeds um, but yeah I've managed to potter along all day and I've sat in here and looked at the fire and then I've sat outside when it's sunny and read a kitchen garden magazine of which I've got hundreds. Um, I should say um, the gourd birdhouse that I've been growing over the last year um, and I'm now varnishing and painting. I've done a video of it over the year so sowing, planting, pruning, harvesting, uh, curing and then varnishing. Um, and I submitted it last night to Gardener's World. You may or may not be aware that since the beginning of the Covid thing they started accepting videos from viewers um, and I, I actually quite like that uh, improvement to Gardener's World programme. Um, it's quite interesting to see the, the wide spectrum of novices and experienced gardeners submitting videos so anyway I've put one in and they've you know uploaded it to the BBC and they've acknowledged it and thanked me for it and they said they keep it for a year and if they don't use it they delete it so we shall see <laughs> with my dulcet tones um, anyway the reason I've done it is because it's so unique I've never seen it uh, before um, until I found it on YouTube and I don't remember how I did that so we'll see um, I shall keep my eyes and ears peeled. So uh, I won't be here next weekend. We've got our first weekend away in the caravan for about four months. Really looking forward to it. In fact, I'm going out to the caravan tomorrow afternoon to give it a clean. Um, so yeah, I won't be around next weekend. I shall post the weekend after. So whatever you're doing in your gardens, enjoy yourself, be nice to each other, and I will see you in a fortnight. Look after yourself. Bye for now.